Today we learn about the ultimate 10 volcano dwellers. Hello, my name is Jeff and welcome back to the Ultimate 10. Now, as many of you already know, volcanoes are some of the most dangerous places in the world. And when one erupts, it can be devastating. But even if a volcano is dormant, the environment around the volcanic area can still be so toxic that humans can't even last a few seconds there, let alone live in it. That being said, for every magma burning inferno this planet has to offer, there are creatures out there willing to risk it all to reap the benefits of living around these fire-filled craters. What are the benefits of living in a volcano, you ask? Well, after talking to a few of these animals personally, the benefits are not nearly as good as being subscribed to this channel. So if you're new, hit subscribe and the bell so you don't miss out on future content. Now let's learn about some of the toughest beasts this planet has to offer. One of the world's most toxic bodies of water is home to two million lesser flamingos. Lake Natron flanks the northern side of an active volcano in Tanzania. The water temperature there frequently rises above 105 degrees Fahrenheit and is very alkaline. These conditions can burn skin, making it inhospitable for most plants, animals, and humans. The flamingos' tough skin and scales on their legs, however, prevent burns and they have a unique ability to drink water near boiling point. But their best talent is that they can remove salt from water using a filter system located in their nasal cavity. These lesser flamingos also love eating algae, which the area is rich with due to volcanic water these birds are surrounded by. Fernandina Island is home to marine and land iguanas and is the most active of the Galapagos volcanoes. Female land iguanas have taken advantage of the thermal heat coming off the volcano's floor. Every year, nearly 2,000 of these lizards make the 10-day trek crawling up and over into the center of the volcano. Once inside, they lay their eggs in the soft, warm ash, which is the perfect temperature for incubation. The constant threat of eruptions, earthquakes, and spewing lava make this climate treacherous for any species, especially ones nesting inside the actual volcano. But the land iguanas are often able to sense increased volcanic activity well in advance, giving them time to climb out and run to safer ground. The vampire ground finch lives on the volcano of Wolf in the Galapagos. During droughts of this volcanic island, the finch population can decrease by 90%. Not to worry, these castaway finches have learned a trick to survive, and that's by turning into vampires. In order to supplement their diet of cactus nectar, pulp, and the contents of bird eggs, the vampire finch will instead drink blood. These finches use their sharp beaks to pierce the flesh of these other birds so that blood is drawn. Drinking this means that the finch can consume all the nutrients needed to enrich its diet. Yeah, I think I'll just take a protein shake. Weighing in at nearly three and a half pounds and measuring 32 inches long from nose to tail, the Basabi woolly rat is one of the biggest rats in the world. These ROUSs, or rodents of unusual size, live in an extinct volcano named Mount Basabi in Papua New Guinea's southern highlands province. This gigantic volcano circular crater is two and a half miles wide and rimmed with walls that are nearly one half mile high, trapping all the creatures inside a lost world of mountain rainforests, probably very rarely visited by humans. One other fun fact about these rats is that they are very tame and seem to enjoy people. There is a remote volcano found in Indonesia's Banda Sea called Fire Mountain. This volcano is very active, and underneath its shoreline is an ecosystem of highly venomous sea snakes. These snakes are not bothered by the lava-touched acidic waters and have been seen hunting in packs. What's worse is that they don't seem to be afraid of humans at all. There are thousands of these snakes in the area and can grow up to three feet in length. 
So watch out when visiting the Banda Sea, because flowing lava isn't all you have to worry about. Aleutian Auklets are seabirds found in the North Pacific. Known for their distinctive appearance, they have dark plumage and striking white facial colors. These small ox are skilled divers, feeding on fish and zooplankton. They often nest on volcanic islands in the Aleutian Archipelago. The islands provide suitable nesting sites and the auklets burrow into the soil and use the rock created by lava flow to make their home. Volcanic activity can shape the landscape, creating cliffs and rocky terrain that these birds find very appealing for breeding. So while not inside the volcanoes themselves, they do still inhabit the areas influenced by volcanic geography. Yeti crabs live near hydrothermal vents in the deep sea. Although they are named after the mythical Yeti due to their hairy appearance, you gotta remember one thing, that's not fur. Its special hair is called sete. Here's the deal. Yeti crabs don't rely on conventional meals. Instead, they have a fascinating diet based on chemosynthetic bacteria. These bacteria live on the setae, covering the crab's claws and limbs. The bacteria convert chemicals from the hydrothermal vent fluids into organic matter through chemosynthesis. The crab then absorbs these organic compounds directly through its setae. So it would be like having an IV shoot nutrients directly into your body. But the IV is actually just your hair, absorbing nutrients into your body. Volcano snails sound like something straight out of fiction. A snail with an iron shell that doesn't need to eat. While the idea of a volcano snail sounds like a Pokemon, I mean the concept does exist in the franchise with Slugma and Mag Cargo, these volcano snails are real creatures. A volcano snail's biology is crazy. Its shell has three layers. The outer layer is made of iron, making it a real armored bug. The middle layer is made of standard snail shell. Finally, the innermost layer is made of aragonite, a carbonate mineral that can also be considered a gemstone. This armor, as well as its bacteria-covered flesh, allow these slimers to live in temperatures as high as 750 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know how they do it. I could not be an armor in that temperature. After a volcano erupts, lava crickets are the first on the scene. These insects make their home on the brittle surfaces of cooled lava flows that host no other multicellular life. Lava crickets survive by eating decaying plants destroyed by the flowing lava, and by drinking sea foam, which contains a protein-like compound similar to what is found in egg whites. When green tufts of plants finally begin to sprout in the volcanic rock, the crickets have already moved on in search of something a little more barren. In other words, lava crickets live off of death itself. Now it's time for some honorable mentions. The Pompeii Worm. The Volcano Rabbit. And the Volcano Frog. Now let's get to number one. We've got ourselves a shark gano, and don't blame me for the name, that's the name the scientists gave to the location we're about to cover. Kavachi is located close to the Solomon Islands. It is ranked among the most active submarine volcanoes found in the southwest Pacific Ocean. The water inside and surrounding the volcano is hot and dangerously acidic for human divers. Even when the crater isn't shooting steam, ash, and lava up to the ocean surface, Divers that have dared to even reach the outer edges of the volcano in the past have had to turn back because of the high temperatures and the acidic burns on their skin. So when a team of scientists sent deep sea cameras down, you can imagine how much of a surprise it was when the team looked at the screen and saw that there were hammerhead sharks swimming in the middle of this volcano. But that's not all. Once the camera reached the very bottom, the recorders also picked up footage of sleeper sharks. Now the reason that is blowing everyone's mind is because sleeper sharks are rarely observed and are native to the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans, as well as Antarctica and Tasmania. 
So finding them in Papua New Guinea inside an actual active volcano was a bit of a shock. Nobody really knows how these creatures are able to endure this otherwise deadly environment. But there they are, just living inside an active volcano. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this list. Was there an animal that you liked more than the others? And if so, would you want us to shine a spotlight on that creature in a future episode of The Animal Files? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to hit subscribe and that like button. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you back here next time as we cover another 10 Ultimate Animals.